good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I appreciate what Brother Larry said. Uh, and uh, thinking about we could uh, we could all uh, stand up and run 15 minutes in place and uh, kind of get exercise and get ready to <laughs> Right. <laughs> all right. It's good to be back. Thank you all so much for uh, putting it up with me. And uh, I, I love each one of you and <laughs> pray for you. Uh, I know the Lord. I know the Lord hears my prayer, and uh, because He answers it so many times, and uh, I'm just thankful that I'm I'm in fellowship with the Lord. I'm just thankful this morning that I know each one of you and have a, a desire to uh, study the week and try to find something. That a lot of times, it's not it's not the greatest uh, lesson in the world, but. Uh, the Lord knows how to use it, and uh, He will take it and bless your heart. So, this morning it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. This morning, if you would turn your books, your Bibles to the the chapter to Matthew's Gospel, the thirteenth chapter, we want to read a parable to you this morning concerning the leaven. Page chapter thirteen, verse thirty three. Thirteen thirty three. <clears throat> Thirteen thirty three, book of Matthew, it says, Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole lump was leavened. Now, first of all, we want to clarify some things here that I don't believe that uh, maybe some people might take uh, and try to use for. Uh, something that's not supposed to be used for, but I don't think that Jesus had anything to do with criticizing a woman. Right. That's that's out of the picture. Amen. And uh, again, what she did, she didn't do it to hide it, but it was the custom back then when a woman went to make bread that she had an old part a little lump of bread that she cooked the day or two before and she took that little lump and she cut it in pieces or then broke it or whatever and she mixed her new flour and her water and all this and she put that in that and then she started stirring and she stirred that till she got it all mixed up now here's the picture the, the little lump that she saved was sin. It, it represents sin. This whole thing here represents sin. And uh, Jesus used it knowing that the people back then knew what was happening when a woman made bread and she had some type of leaven in like uh, what we call baking powders and stuff like that. But that was what it was for. And it was for one purpose and that was one purpose only and that was to make this, this bread uh, this baking powder, this uh, stuff that she put in there, go all the way through the piece of the new piece of flour and uh, or bread and make it rise and make it more beautiful and more uh, aroma to it and all of this. And this is what Jesus used to type uh, to to uh, uh, tell the people. Uh, what what was sin, but the thing of it was, he's like so many. They were so like so many other people that they didn't know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so he has to in the in the lesson he has to go and explain it to them. Right. But I want to show you something this morning. In in this in this lump, she took from the other that she made. She kept sin or she kept living it. And it's the same way with sin. Sin is passed on. Sin is passed on, and sin is passed on. And we, this morning, uh, have a tendency to uh, keep a little peace uh, in our pocket, or if you would, or we uh, remember something back 20 years ago that's uh, 
it was a little ha ha, but the thing of it is, in God's eyes, it was a sin. Mm -hmm. And so we keep a little lump sometimes in our pocket or somewhere, and and we we bring it out, and sometimes we love to rehearse it, reminisce about it, and say, oh boy, we was really having a good time. But listen, as we grow older and as we uh, understand God's word and understand about sin, it's not as a pleasant thing as we thought it was years ago. And so this is why that we, as this, as this, this happens, we need to remember uh, that uh, 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 sin, sin will will stay with you. Right. Sin will will tell on you, just like the bread that rolls. Now they knew that there was leaven in there because the bread rolls. And the thing of it is, this morning, uh, sometimes our fruit is not like it should be. Sometimes people view us and say, oh, I wonder about that because, listen, our tree sometimes gets a little sour grape or two on it mm -hmm. and uh, we bear some fruit that's not really Christ-like. And so our, our steps, our, our actions, our speaking and all this, sometimes uh, it identifies something that, uh, that we have to get forgiveness for. Mm -hmm. And we have all sinned. Right. We've all come short of the glory of God. And so there's no big secret about me sinning or you sinning. And if you say that you've not sinned, then what do you do? You make God a liar. Right. And so this morning, there's no reason for a person to deny this, but you know what? There's so many people out there today that sin daily and they'll come face to face to you and say, I ain't seen in 20 years. Mm. And, and it's, well, it's through, it's through ignorance, a lot of it. And some of it is just, uh, they just want to hide things that they do. So anyway, this is, this is the picture of a lump of bread that the woman was making. And I want to, I want to turn to, well, in verse 34, we'll read this and then we'll get on to another lesson, another uh, chapter. All the, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parable, and without parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parable, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Now, he goes on to speak other parables, but this thing this thing was revealed in Jesus' time. It wasn't revealed, uh, it wasn't revealed back in Moses' time and all this. And I want to show you something this morning in Psalms 98. I mean Psalms 78. I have here, yeah, Psalm 78 and verse uh, two, uh, 1. He says here in Psalm 72, 1, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the word of my mouth. In other words, you listen, you, you, you keep still and listen with your ear to what I've got to say. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children. Now listen to this. This is, this is good information to those that are raising families, those that have grandchildren, those that have great-grandchildren, those that are, that are trying to uh, encourage the children. He says here, he says, we will not hide them from the children, their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. Amen. Now Jesus is saying, or uh, David is saying this, and Jesus repeated it in our lesson today, but uh, he, he, he told them that the, to, about the prophets. And the gener in, in verse 6, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who shall rise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments 
and might not be as as their father, a stubborn and a rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carried bows, turned back in the battle of in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law and forgot His works and His wonders that He had shown them. And so this, these things that, that Jesus is talking about back over in our lesson here where he says here it, that in verse 35 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets saying I will open my mouth in peril. And so this is what Jesus, why the, 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 the scripture says that Jesus, uh, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in peril. And this was for those that he was speaking them to that they might understand them or if they didn't that they might come to him and ask him to clarify them and tell them what, what was going on because listen this is something that uh, that the world was not exposed to because of, you know, what they would do to it, like a hog does to pearls. Mm -hmm. They would trample them under their feet, and uh, they would, uh, it would be a shame for uh, them to do that. So here we see that this, this is why he, uh, in verse uh, uh, 30, he says, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So we see here then that, that, that Jesus is speaking this and that there is so much to this and there's so many reasons why that he did this this way. Mm -hmm. And listen, people, we, uh, as I read over there in Psalms this morning, we need to pay close attention to this. And you say, well, I haven't got no children. Well, we haven't either. That's small. But listen, we've got grandchildren, we've got great-grandchildren, mm -hmm. and listen, we can help we can pray for them. We can uh, even help their their mothers and their their fathers. And listen, we can be a help to one another. And 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 God expects us to do that because that's why we're put here, and that is to bear fruit and to be a witness for Him. Because the our time will come when we're going to stand before Him, and we can hear, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." Mm -hmm. And so Amen. this morning, uh, if you desire, if you desire the blessings, and I mean the blessings that He's promised us, that He would bless us, He would bless our works, our endeavor to do these things and to encourage people. You need to study your word, your Bible. Amen. Show yourself approved what He says, and. Just keep on studying on it, and when you see something, if you can't, like me, can't remember it, write it down, write the verse down, mm -hmm. go back and read it again, read it again, and listen, before long, before long, God will give you an opening Amen. that you can use that. And listen, it's not no fairy tale, it's the truth, because I have witnessed it time and time again, and I give God the praise for every word that I've ever uttered that would praise Him. Because Amen. Because listen, He deserves all of our prayers. Amen. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves everything that we can muster up to, to do for Him. And, you know, a lot of times we get tired and we don't feel like doing this and we don't feel like that. And I ain't no use to this and that. But you listen to me this morning. You put God first, and I'll guarantee you he'll, he'll be behind you, holding you up and, and lifting you up. And, and before long, you're, you're through the day, and everything went well. Amen. So that's, this, that's, that's something that should encourage you this morning. So uh, notice, I want, I want to read you uh, another uh, scripture here in uh, Matthew 16, 5, what he says about the living. Matthew 16 and verse 5, it says here, And when the disciples were come to the other side, this is where the, Jesus had sent them across, and, and, and when the disciples, and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. And then Jesus said unto them, Take heed, and beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, 
What did they think? They thought they forgot to bring it. But see, you see, it's like the woman with the bread. It's just an example. And here he's using the same thing. And he is using this because they're thinking, hey, we forgot our bread. But later on, when, when he tells them what he's talking about, then they can connect that with this memory here and remember this thing. And, and because of the bread situation and probably sometimes they kind of sniggered a little bit about how silly we were, how stupid we was. But listen to this. He says here in verse six, then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves saying, it is because we have taken no bread. When, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Now, <laughs> he brings to their attention, he brings to their attention this huge, huge crowd up there, and they fasted three days and all of this, and they were hungry, and he, he said, I can't send them away because they're hungry and they'll, they'll fall by the wayside. Now notice, he said, do you not re understand, neither remember the five loaves and the 5,000, and how many baskets you took up? Neither the seven, neither the seven loaves of, and the 4,000, how many baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I speak it not to your concerning, not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Amen. So he brought this to their attention and he used another, he used another miracle to show them and give them understanding this because he said in verse 12, then understand they, then understood they how he bade them not be aware of the leavening of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And so many times, and you can, we'll read it maybe, uh, I've read and studied it, but they had these things about washing their hands before they eat and, and they criticized the disciples because they didn't, because they was out there in the corn and, the, and just eating the corn and, or the wheat and, and they didn't wash their hands. And Jesus, uh, he told them something. He said, it's not what goes into the body that defiles it. And he's saying to them this morning, and, and you know, we, we try to keep our hands washed and, and, and everything and keep the, the dirt and all off of it. But that's not what defiles. That's not what's the most important thing in your life this morning is what's going in. But it's what's coming out. Amen. And he's 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 giving them an, an example of that, and uh, uh, they they still didn't understand these things. And so he said, "Don't you know that when anything goes in, it goes through the body and out, and it don't defile." And the word defile means uh, unclean. It it doesn't unclean you if you eat with dirty hands. But he says. What comes out is what defiles the inner part, and that's where the soul and the spirit is, and that's what God looks upon, and that's what is going to stand before God because this old body is going to be going taken to the ground right. and rot. And so He's saying that that goes in, don't defile it, don't hurt you. And 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 you know, you say, well, uh, I don't like to eat with dirty hands. Well, I don't either. But the thing of it is, He's trying to get a point across this morning how that we are defiled. Mm -hmm. And listen, the defilement comes when our eyes gaze upon something and lust after it or want to say something smart <laughs> about it or, or even participate in the thing that we see. That's when the defile comes. That's when the dirty soul, the soul gets dirty and, 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 or the, and it gets defiled and it has to be puked up. It has to be out, uh, cleaned up. And so, this is what he's talking about here, uh, and, 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 and then he says in verse uh, 13, And when Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? 
that, that I am the son of man, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, Elijah, and others. He said unto them, but whom say ye? And Simon Peter said, and art, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus Amen. answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, sar, by, sar, Simon bar Jonah. What came out? What came out of Peter there? That, and he said, blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah. There wasn't nothing to file come out of him, he recognized who he was. He told people who he was. And that's what we're, we're, we need to do this morning. And listen, if we have to uh, eat something maybe that's not really good and tasteful, or, or, or maybe, you know, not what we're, we we'll use the turn our nose up, listen, it ain't going to keep us from standing before God uh, and, and, and saying, and not, and not, uh, and, and hearing, well done because listen that is for the flesh and the flesh is not a sinful it's never going to be saved and the only thing it's going to do is die pay the death for the sin that is committed and be glorified and re-resurrected as a glorified body so Amen. listen this old flesh listen it's just here as a tabernacle to carry our soul around until we get called out by god Amen. so this is this this is another reason I wanted to read this to you, and uh, and if you wanted to read this about the 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 in Mark eight I think it is there's there's about the feeding of the uh, of the, all the multitude there. Now let's see he says um, seven Mark I'm gonna turn to Mark just a minute here and read just a little bit more. I'm going to go on Matthew Mark Mark of seven. Look. Mark 7 19, if I can find it real easy. Okay, 7 19. And when Mark 17, 7 17. No, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm 7 1. Turn 7 1, please. Uh, and for that way, I'll, I'll get what I've got. It's one through seven. Right with me. Okay. In book, uh, chapter 7 of the book of Mark, verse 1. Then came together unto them the Pharisees and the certain of the scribes which came forth from Jerusalem. And they saw some of the, here it is, the, his disciples eating bread with defiled hands. That is to say, with unwashed hands, and they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their hands off, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. And when they came from the market, except they washed, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and, and tablets. They did all of these things. They did all of this under the... Uh, under the, uh, their belief, under their doctrines, and it was a it was a, a doctrine of theirs, their belief that they never eat without washing hands or not cleaning their pots or these things. And the, and the, and here we, we see here in verse five, and the Pharisees and the ask, why not the disciples? Why not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashed hands. And he answered and said unto them, Well, has Isaiah the prophet of prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honor me with their lips, but with their heart is far from me. Amen. How be it? In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. And so this is why he called this, 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 doctrine of theirs it was a unleavened sinful doctrines and he said here for for doctrine the commandments of men for laying aside the commandment of god you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do and he said unto them full will ye reject the commandments of god that ye may keep your own traditions. Mm -hmm. They were dead set on doing their thing. That's the reason why they criticized those for for eating without washed hands. They 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 did these things, and it's the same way this morning. 
Uh, it's the same way with baptism and with works. This through this through this country and right now, listen, they criticize people because they don't believe that baptism is for salvation and that you gotta work out your own salvation and you gotta do this and you gotta do that in order to be saved. Listen, it's not so and Amen. anybody out there as that's listening to this realize this morning that baptism is for salvation. Our baptism is not for salvation, but it's because of salvation. Amen. I'll get that very plain to you. Yes. Baptism does not have anything to do with your salvation until after you're saved, and then it shows to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And so here, this is the same thing when they washed the pots, they washed their hands, and they did all these things. And, and in verse 10 of our, our lesson in seven, Mo, and for Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, Whoso causes father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift by what so whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And so he's saying to the children, uh, the, the Pharisees says, he said, hey, you don't have to help your parents or nothing like this. Uh, the, you you do what you do is. Uh, it is not necessary to help them. And here, and he said in verse 12, and you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God not, of none effect through your traditions, which ye have delivered, and many such like things you do. And God said to, uh, Jesus said unto them all, honor thy father and thy mother. And they say, no, that's not the way to do it. We let them do what they want to, and we don't help them. And that's, that was what he's talking about here. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken or listen unto me, every one of you, and understand there is nothing from without a man that entereth into him and defile him but the thing which cometh out of him. Those are that defile the man. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning this parable. They didn't understand it. And he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enters into a man, it cannot defile him? Because it enters not into his heart, but into his belly and goeth out into the draught, purging all meat. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from without, or for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, and murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, licitiousness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things, cometh from within and defileth the man. So that's Amen. where that's where we're at today. All of these things that are coming out of this old fleshly body, that's the things that we have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, help me not to do them and when I do them, forgive me. Because listen, that defiles the that defiles and uh, it's not pleasing to God this to uh, for us to do these things. And so this is our this is our lesson this morning. Hope that something has uh, been read. I know I went through one, some of it twice, but listen, we need to understand that our body is the temple of God. Amen. And this body is, is not supposed to be mistreated. This body is not supposed to, to be permitted by the Spirit to lust and, 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 and have a desire for things that it does not need because listen it's a sin it's a sin when we when we do things that we shouldn't do with this body uh and and he called over a bunch of them there and listen even thievery stealing if it ain't nothing but a, a, a penny listen it just is great in the eyes of god is a thousand dollars it's 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 the it's the act and and this body is not supposed to do these things and uh, I know it's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. I know it sins. And I know it has a desire to sin. But listen, you know in your spirit 
That's the truth. You know this morning in, in, in your spirit that it's not supposed to do it, and you're supposed to be on guard all the time. And uh, so that's that's the way it is. It's it's a touch and go thing, and we've got to be awake all the time and, and watch and think two steps ahead of time because, listen, mm -hmm. the devil's after three steps ahead. And he's, he's laying one, he's laying it in front of us every day, and he wants us to, to, to take hold and nibble and bite on these things. And, and then we have the problem that we have sin in our bodies again. And, and you know, sin is sometimes, it, it, takes a, it takes a while to get rid of it. Uh, you know, uh, and, and I'm saying about asking God to forgive. And, and God forgives. But sometimes, listen, it's so hurtful when you have to go around for two or three days and you're, 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 you're still under that condemnation and you're thinking, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. But the thing of it is, God is forgiving and he will forgive. But we just need to, we need to keep up with ourselves and, and uh, not, let, not let him do these things that we have. Thank you all. Listen to me. We uh, hope that anybody should be.